Welcome to Highland Park Missionary Baptist Church Wednesday night Bible study where the Reverend Byron L. Cox is our pastor and I am Reverend Donna Vestal and our topic tonight will be being mighty in your weakness. 
Can your meekness be tested? While many people think they show patience, they may not be weak, meek. Everyone who claims to be patient or knows how to wait is not meek. However, those who are meek usually exhibit that other great fruit of patience. Tonight, we want to answer the question, can your meekness be tested? How do I live a mighty life through meekness in a world where people are rude, mean, ungrateful, short-changed, taking shortcuts with a lack of concern, empathy, or courtesy. You know, just the other day, I spent about $30 on a meal. When I got home, what I ordered was not even in the bag. It's testing your patience when you don't get what you expect. Or how about when you're waiting for medications and you get that robocall that says that they're ready. And when you show up at the pharmacy, they look at you as though, what are you here for? The medication will not be here until tomorrow. Meekness, testing your meekness, your meekness under the pressure cooker. We're going to be talking about meekness and being mighty in that today. Lord, we want to be mighty, but our meekness sometimes seems to be unraveling. And because we all sin, it is inevitable, inevitable, that we sometimes lose our zest for meekness from time to time. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we desire to be mighty in Christ. We don't want to be overtaken or overcome by the tactics of the enemy. We realize that we are often tossed, tested, and driven. We therefore do not want to be downcast, in doubt, or disbelief. For we are your warriors, O oh God. You called us to be mighty warriors and not wimpy in our spirit. Help us, O oh God, to be like Gideon, who you poured out your spirit and declared, O oh, mighty man of valor, Lord, help us to be vigilant, valiant, victorious because of your meekness and your mercy towards us. For your word declares it's not by might nor by power, but by your ever-present spirit, declares the Lord. It is in Jesus' most precious and powerful name I do pray. Amen and amen. Again, tonight, we want to come from the topic, Mighty in Your Meekness. Can your meekness be tested? And the global text that I will come from is Matthew 5 and 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. That's Matthew 5, verse 5. And then Colossians 3.12 says, Therefore, as we are the elect of God, the chosen, the ambassadors, we are to put on tender mercy, humility, long-suffering, and meekness. To put it on, to clothe ourselves, to dress ourselves up in the things of Christ. Can your meekness be tested? Some of you out there most say it definitely can, just as early as today. You know, recently I read from Numbers 12, verse 3. Numbers 12, verse 3. And it reads as follows. Now, the man Moses was very meek, more than all the people who were on the face of the earth. Numbers 12.3 again reads, Now 
The man Moses was very meek, more than all the people on the face of the earth. I thought about that. And I thought about the life of Moses, who was such a trailblazer, a leader for the children of Israel. As I thought about and looked over the life of Moses being mighty as well as meek, I considered Moses, the man who killed an Egyptian. Moses, the man who parted the Red Sea. Moses, the man that led thousands out of Egypt, was the meekest man on the face of the earth. Yes, Moses. Moses, who smashed the Ten Commandment tablets and then ground the golden calf into powder and made his fellow man, his countrymen, drink it. He was meek, a man as mighty as Moses, Yes, Moses' meekness, even as a great leader, even as one who sought after God, had been tested. Tested in the midst of trying to do the Father's will. Tested in the midst of trying to receive God's miracles. Jesus tells us in Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And Psalm 37 and 12, I'm sorry, Psalm 37 and 11, David says, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. prosperity. See, in order to walk with a mighty God, to lead you, it requires meekness. It requires seeking God's face. Moses asked God to show him the way. He desired and he sought after God fervently. Even when we make mistakes along the journey, we must remain meek before God. He was meek enough to ask God to show him the way. Meekness is teachability. Learning from God is the key to inheriting God's benefits right now. Why wait where you can enjoy the benefits of God right now? Perhaps this is why Moses is described as meek, because he certainly sought after God. He had a relationship, a dialogue with the Lord. He spoke to God face to face, and the Lord used him to do wondrous and powerful things. In Exodus 34 and 29, Moses was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoke with God. See, God wants to make each of us radiant when we see the face of God. You know, many believe that meekness and strength do not go together. You know, you've heard the saying before, don't take my meekness for weakness. Yet, we are charged to be meek and mighty because Christ is meek and merciful and mighty, and so are we because we are in him. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is a character, is not a character trait of timidness or letting people walk all over you or run all over you. It doesn't mean that we are to cower or to retreat from our principles. It does not mean that we, are, we need to surrender all of our rights. In fact, the Bible is rich just as it showed us in Moses, by Moses' walk with God, that we must demonstrate great resolve, great courage, and conviction in order to receive all the inheritance and a great reward. See, meekness is not passive, but it is active. It's what leads us 
to be in the face of God. Meekness will tell you when to speak up and when to be silent. Meekness is a result of the ability to discern and show wisdom and causes God and it causes us to turn to God for help. Help, his everlasting, his ever loving presence. This is an important trait as we know about all the fruit of the spirit. But meekness is one that is sometimes often look, overlooked because people think if I'm patient, I'm also meek. But we must understand that in these times where people and situations and circumstances cause us to react, we must be proactive in Christ. You remember the song of old, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high your royal banner. It must not suffer loss. When we are in the face of God, it might seem like we have temporal suffering, but he is an everlasting God because he's mighty. Mighty and meekness go hand in hand. Meekness refers to an attitude or better yet, a quality of your heart. It is a willingness to accept the will of God. And meekness is also generated by the love of God. Seven targets towards meekness. The meek have self-control. We must understand the difference between assertiveness and aggressiveness in their perspective place. We all must be assertive in our pursuit of imitating Christ. Number two, the meek are humble, not haughty, but teachable. See, Moses was teachable because he was, he was meek. He humbled himself. Even in the midst of error and mistake, he was humble and not haughty. Number three, the meek are bold with faith and confidence. I know the vicissitudes and the problems of life can seem to wear us down, but faith is what God wants to see in each of his believers. Number four, target towards meekness is the meek know how to forgive. Have you ever been wronged? Have you ever been lied on? Have you ever been mistreated? But the meek, the word says in Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So the meek must forgive. Number five, the meek are repentant. That Hebrew word for shoe, to turn things around for the betterment of your journey with Christ. The meek are repentant. Number six, the meek also serve others. God is the greatest servant before all men, for he gave his life as a living sacrifice for you and me today. And then number seven, the meek have might, which brings us to our topic, that you can be mighty in your meekness because we serve a mighty God. Now, some of you all may have moments where you say, well, uh, I want to be mighty, but my meekness seems to be unraveling. And that's okay, because we all again have sinned. And it is inevitable from time to time that we lose some of our savor and we lose some of our meekness from time to time. We have to remember even when we confront things, it's not what we say, but how we say it to others. See, all of us can earn a PhD in perseverance, humility, and discipline before our Christ. You see, Jesus 
is the ultimate role model on being meek and being mighty at the same time. He was never weak. He chose to lay down his life, and he says in his word that no man takes my life, but I freely give it. He could have called 10,000 angels in the snap of his finger during the crucif cruc crucifixion and shut everything all down. But Jesus sacrificed, went humbly before the cross for you and me. The selfless act to exude and pour out and demonstrate power under control. It's the difference, again, between being assertive and being aggressive. He was meek. He was assertive because he had us in mind. It wasn't a selfish love, but it was a selfless love that God demonstrated by his willingness to take on all of our heavy burdens and bear them for us. He literally had the weight of the world on his shoulders. And because he bore the weight, the least we can do is wait for him through meekness. Our Lord and Savior is charging us to show meekness towards one another. And so as I take my seat, as I close, I want to share this brief story. You know, I began a few moments ago by just hinting on the difference between patience and meekness. See if you can identify the difference in this story. The other day I was at one of the big box stores. Several people were waiting in line. There were about 20 registers open, but two workers actually scanning and making sure everybody uh, purchased their items. Everyone who was waiting appeared to be patient. No one was screaming. No one was pushing. Everyone appeared to be patient, and everyone appeared to be meek. The lady in front of me had a puppy. The puppy was so cute. It was dr dressed in a bonnet, had a tie, was in a bassinet. But the puppy began barking and harking and coughing on its owner and uh, on customers who were waiting patiently in the line. No one said anything. But the lady who held a puppy was accidentally hit with a basket by a disheveled elderly woman through her unintentional, involuntary act. The elderly woman had actually bumped into the lady with the puppy while we were waiting. Yet, the lady with the puppy began yelling at the elderly woman, woman, belittling her, yelling at her, telling her that she was the most disgusting person because she couldn't pay attention. See, she was kinder to her puppy than she was to mankind. She was kinder to her puppy that caused such a major disturbance by coughing and barking at the customers than she was to the elderly lady. Where was her softness to timber? Where was her long suffering and her compassion? She not only lost her patience, but she also lost her meekness. And Proverbs 25 and 28 says, he who has no control over his spirit is like a city that is broken down without walls. Ultimately, I saw the lady with the cute puppy who had been waiting which I thought was patiently, she had no meekness. I saw the woman in a whole new light. I understand that we live in a culture 
that preaches, I don't need anyone, self-sufficiency, independence. I'm strong all by myself. But that's why we have the Bible. Basic instructions before leaving this earth. And in Jesus' word, he's telling us to do the exact opposite. To be meek. To be meek like Moses, even in the midst of misfortune. In Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Jesus says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For, my, for I am gentle and I am humble in heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. See, children of God, meekness is desired by a mighty God. Some of the properties that we can imitate from our Christ are his spirit, are his strength, his submission, his surrender, his power under control. There is nothing wimpy about being meek before God. So when people come to you and they test your meekness, leave them in peace rather than problematic. Leave them better rather than broken. Leave these people with Jesus rather than conjecture. And they will see your mightiness and your meekness. Does anyone desire to be mighty like the mighty God we serve? You can find out more about the mighty God we serve who gave his son as an example for us. And today, we are surrounded by his Holy Spirit. Perhaps you need a church, you need a church home, or you need a change, or you just simply need to understand this mighty Christ that we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Let us pray. Most gracious, all wise God, we thank you for being mighty for us, for doing mighty, miraculous, and majestic acts and miracles daily. We are grateful that what you do has not ceased, that your mercy and your grace continues forever and ever. Watch our minds, oh God. Give us your mind's eye. Give us your ears. Give us what you would have us to say in the times that we would need to say it, oh God. I ask a special blessing for those who have turned in to just hear a word that seems so simple but most profound because it is a fruit of your spirit, oh God. Father, we thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for being a sovereign God. I ask a special blessing upon this church and all the church churches that stand open in your son, Jesus' name. Now, go, the rest of us, go with us the rest of this week, protecting us, instructing us, guiding us, and covering us. For we desire to be mighty like you, O oh God. It is in Jesus' most precious and powerful name we do pray. Amen and praise God. May you be blessed in your meekness and blessed wherever you trod.
God, lift up your praise and 